guys, you're welcome back to my channel. It's a beautiful day to be alive. My name is IJ and I'm coming to you all the way from Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Yes, if you're new on this channel, you're seeing this face for the very first time, you're welcome to IJ's corner. But don't forget to click on that red subscribe button. And for my returning subscribers, you guys are the real deal. Thank you so much for the support. I don't take it for granted at all. Now, today's video is actually a collaboration video with Shola of DN Vlogs Life. I'm sure a lot of you know Shola. I'm, I'm sure from the title, you already know what this video is all about. But what you don't know is that it is the part two of this topic. Part one is on DN Vlogs Life channel. I'll put the description there so you go and watch that part one. You understand the gist of what I'm talking about because this is a continuation of that other video. All right, so let's go straight to the discussion. Thank you so much, Shola, for this great, great opportunity to collab with you. I'm so, so happy. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. I've been looking forward to this opportunity. Thank you so much. So, yes, we're talking about training or raising teenagers. So I'll be sharing my own experiences with you. I'm a mother of four boys, three of whom are teenagers. In fact, the first one will soon leave the teenage years, okay? By November, he will cease being a teenager. But for now, he's still a teenager. Yes, so I have three teenagers at home. So I'll be sharing with you my experiences, how I raised them, and the things I learned while raising them, okay? So, so guys, please don't forget to go to DM Vlogs Live TV channel to subscribe, to watch the video, and to leave a comment. And don't forget to let her know that IJ's Corner sent you, okay? That's the way we do it. Remember that this is a continuation. So my number one to five is on her channel. I'm starting from number six on my channel. Number six. We guide them in making decisions and we make them understand that every choice they make, they will be responsible for the consequences. There are consequences that come with every decision. There are consequences that come with every action. So we guide them in taking the right decisions, making the right choices, and we allow them to take some decisions themselves. Okay, especially when we know that the, the consequences or, or whatever will come out of that decision is not going to be a very serious thing. Okay, so we allow them make their decision, learn from their mistakes, and then, you know, make better choices next time. Number seven, we teach them the importance of having the right friends. Okay, you know, Bible says that Evil communication corrupts good manners. And communication there is not just talking about oral communication. It also means association. So who you associate with is very, very important. So we make them understand that. And you know, there's something that is called rub off. Rub off is influence. You know, you're either influencing someone or the person is influencing you. Okay. That, you know, that is why some people say husband and wife, they look alike because they have stayed together so much that they begin to, you know, do some things the same way is to look as if they look alike. So when you, when you spend a lot of time with someone, whether you like it or not, you will start behaving like that person. You will pick one or two, or two things from the person. So that is why it is important to be mindful of who you make friends with. So we, we let them understand that. And you know this English saying that um, birds of the same feather flock together. Now, for example, if you say you don't drink, you don't smoke, and you're always in the company of those that drink and smoke, one day you'll be pressured to try it. Or if something happens, they'll say, yes, he was in their company. So it's important. We have made them understand. It is important who you make friends with. It is important for you to make the right kind of friends that will help you positively in your life. Don't just hang out with anyone. Don't just succumb to peer pressure. It is important 
to have the right kind of friends that will help you. Same people that have same values as you. People that that see life the same way you see life. It is very, very important. And we have made them understand that. So now when it also comes to friends, okay, let's talk about friends. So when it comes to friends, my daughter was a, my teenage, current teenage teenager she was a late bloomer in that instance but now she has a group of friends and i envy that to be honest with you i envy that but when it comes to friends do's and don'ts and stuff i don't know how the parenting teenager in nigeria is but my daughter she is able to go to her friend's house i don't chaperone her now when she was younger when she goes to her friend's house like i would go there you know, I think once I'll go there, I'll just hang out there. But now that she's a teenager, I allow her to go to her friend's house. They hang out there for a while and she just comes back before curfew. Okay. So, um, we, that's what we do. We have an understanding when it says, when it's like going to your friend's house, you have to know the type of friend you have to know the family. It's very important for us to know the family. It's just not anybody that we allow uh for a child to so, so, uh, socialize with uh in addition i would say teenagers in the u.s they like going to the mall they like going to the movies so it took me some time to let my daughter go alone and when i mean alone i don't mean that there's nobody sharp running now when we drop her off at the mall with her friends, there's usually maybe a parent or an older sibling. There's always someone in the back. And when we are doing the chaperoning, we are not like right there with them. We are actually like in the background. Now, the key thing about teenagers is for me, I want to know where you are. So I use this app called Life360 and that app actually helps me to figure out, okay, where's my daughter here? My daughter is there. Where is she? And my daughter travels a lot for competitions, for school events. So that really helps me out. So lastly, one thing that I will say in terms of um, teenagers is raising teenagers and education. So school is totally, <laughs> I'm laughing because when my daughter entered high school, she's a freshman in high school. And freshman in high school, I would say, is it like SS1? Hmm. Should I say SS? Yeah, like SS1 or so. That's what we call it in Nigeria. So, but in Nigeria. But when my daughter entered high school, I was, I didn't know what to expect because this is my first time. And she'll come home with homework and stuff. And it's not like you are helping them with their homework because you yourself, you don't even understand what they are writing. <laughs> but in high school, things are different. You see, you see girls and boys having boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Do we have a discipline in terms of that? You see, I'm mi mixing the education with relationship. My family, we have a policy and we, right now we are not doing boyfriend, girlfriend. Okay, we're not doing boyfriend, girlfriends. We're doing, if you have a friend who is a boy, we're not doing, you know what I mean, boyfriend, girlfriend. I don't want all that kissy kissy, all that nyamema. We don't do. So we discipline them in terms of, we use the Nigerian standard for that. Now, for us, we always do that thing where we're like, okay, if a boy likes you, don't be rude. Don't be rude to him, you know, talk, you know, talk normal but don't do what you know you shouldn't do our kids are very open with us and that's why it's important as parents you have to be open with your children you have to be those kind of parents that your child can talk to um somebody actually said oh you shouldn't be your you shouldn't be your friend your child's um friend you should be more or less the parent who is the parent you should always be the parent but i always feel like you know you need to I have a time when you your child can talk to you about anything your child should be able to talk to you about anything me and my daughter we talk about anything and um but not everything anything but not everything there are some things that kids don't need to know each kid has an age where they need to know something so when it comes to relationship we're very careful and we're very adamant about telling them that if you do something the results might be negative okay and you should be able to hone up to that negative negative result number eight we try to explain the why behind every decision 
or sleep <laughs> or disciplinary action that we take. You know, children are very inquisitive. When they become teenagers, you know, it's like they want to explore, they want to do things. So when we take decisions, we try to make them understand why those decisions were taken. And then when they are being disciplined, we make them understand why they are being disciplined. We don't just discipline and let the child go. No, we call the child back, sit him down, and we try to find out from him whether he understood why we did what we did. So it's very important that you, that you let them understand the why. Don't just say, ah, okay, they are asking you, so why did you say I shouldn't go to this place? Or why did you say I shouldn't do this? And you just say, because I said so. I'm your mother or I'm your father. I said so. It's not satisfactory enough. It's not satisfying. That answer will not help anything. But when you explain to the child why you did what you did or said what you said or took the decision you did, took, it would help them so that even tomorrow, they would be better parents. Number nine, we try to make them understand the importance of making the right choices when it comes to financial matters. In fact, we actually encourage them, you know, not just to think of getting a job, but to think of creating jobs. Don't just think of working for someone, but think of being an employer of labor. Think entrepreneurship. We, we try to help them to appreciate the value of things. You know, not just um, because you can, you, you don't just get things because you can afford it. You get things because you need it. It's not because, oh, I can afford this. Okay, I can spend money. I have enough money for this. I'll go get it or not. Make them understand. You can delay gratification. You mustn't get that thing now, 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 now. Is there something else you can do with that money you have that would, that would be, that will yield you a better result than if you spend the money now? We also teach them the importance of saving. You have to save. The importance of taking the right financial decisions, importance of, of placing the right value on things, saving and all that. You don't have to wait until they start working for you to start teaching them that. They have to know this thing so that while they are even in school, they can start off some things for themselves. You know, while I was in school, I had students in my class that were making money, that had businesses by the side, making money. So it, there's nothing wrong in letting the child know that he can do other things while he's studying, but at the same time, making him realize that he studies, his academics is more important now than any other thing. So he should, in as much as, yes, it's good for him to get a job, it's good for him to work, it's good for him to do or to make money, but concentrate on your academics for now. Don't put all your energy on making money. Concentrate, there is time for everything. You know, that kind of scenario. Number 10, the last but not the least. Parenting, this is to the parents. Parenting is not um, an easy job, okay? So it's necessary that you understand that you are not alone in the job. When I say you are not alone, I don't mean maybe you have your husband or you have your wife. There are great, there are single parents out there that are doing a great job. So whether you're a single parent or you're a married parent, understand that you're not alone. God is with you. God is the one that gave you the children. And he's the one that will, you know, that will help you to train them. Always depend on him, knowing that he's the one that can help you to be the best parent that you are, that you can be. All right. So. Thank you so much for watching. I want to believe that you enjoyed this topic. Thank you also, Shola, for giving me this opportunity to collaborate with you on this. Thank you so much, everyone. Please ensure that you go to DM Vlogs Live channel to watch the part one of this video because this is a continuation, all right? Thank you so, so much. 
but also don't forget to click on that video right there for more interesting content okay and until i come your way next time please stay safe and always remember that your life is your responsibility god bless you i love you Mwah.